In this video, we will be assembling the John Deere Front Mounted Dethatcher for Z500 series mowers. Tools required for assembly, a 7 16th inch wrench and socket, a half inch wrench and deep socket, a 9 16th inch wrench and socket, a 5 8 inch wrench and socket, and a 5 32 inch Allen wrench. Safety glasses and gloves are also recommended when handling the tine tray. Step 1. Use caution while removing the mower floor plate from your Z500 series John Deere mower. Carefully place the panel aside for now. Step 2A. Attaching the mounting brackets. Line the two holes on the flat side of the right mounting bracket up with the two diagonal holes in the top of the front of the mower, right of center from the driver's seat perspective. Add a washer to a 3 8 inch by quarter inch bolt and pass the bolt through both pieces. Then add another washer and a lock nut to the end of the bolt below the deck. Add another washer to a 3 8 inch by quarter inch bolt and pass the second bolt through both pieces. Adding a washer and a lock nut to the end of the bolt below the deck, hand tightening only for now. Then repeat this step on the other side, lining up the two holes on the flat side of the left mounting bracket with the two diagonal holes just left of the center hole from the driver's perspective. Add a washer to another 3 8 inch by quarter inch bolt and pass the bolt through both pieces, adding a second washer and lock nut to the end of the bolt below the deck. Then add another washer to a fourth 3 8 inch by quarter inch bolt and pass the bolt through both pieces, adding a second washer and lock nut to the end of the bolt below the deck, hand tightening only for now. Then connect the mounting brackets to the front of the mower by adding two washers to two 7 16th inch by one and a quarter inch bolts and passing them through the holes in the brackets and the front of the mower. Adding a washer and a lock nut to the end of each bolt, hand tightening only for now. Step 2B, attaching the cross support. Make sure the safety label is facing up on the cross support and place it below the ends of the frame mount brackets lining up the holes. Then pass four 3 8 inch by one and a quarter inch carriage bolts through both pieces and add four lock nuts to the end of each of the bolts. Do not fully tighten completely. Step 3A, attaching the latch weldment. First, pass the bolt through the lower hole in the upper extension of the frame and add a nylon flange bushing to the end, making sure the extension is pointing away. Then add the latch weldment by passing the bolt through the circular lower hole in the center and add a second nylon flange bushing, making sure to put the extensions of both nylon bushings into the circular hole in the weldment. Then place the spring around the nylon bushing and pass the bolt through the nylon bushing with the spring attached. Add another nylon flange bushing to the end, making sure the extension is inserted into the other side of the latch weldment. Then pass the bolt through the circular hole in the other side of the latch weldment, adding one more nylon bushing, making sure the extension goes into the hole in the latch weldment. And finally, run the bolt through the lower hole in the extension on the other side of the frame, adding a lock nut to the end of the bolt. Now, tighten all of the bolts connecting the mower to the frame mounting completely. Use caution underneath of the mower. Make sure to also fully tighten the two bolts that attach the front of the mount brackets to the front of the mower. Also tighten the four carriage bolts on the cross support using a half inch socket wrench to fully secure the support in place. Now, fully tighten the lock nut on the end of the quarter inch by three and three quarter inch hex bolt holding the spring. Now, using caution, reinstall the mower floor plate. Step 3B, setting the spring. Install the second quarter inch by three and three quarter inch hex head bolt by passing it through the top hole of the frame extension and the slotted hole in the middle of the weldment and sliding it in front of the loop of the spring latch before passing it through the other side of the weldment and frame. And add a lock nut to the end of the bolt. Then pull the spring ears down to the bottom of the latch weldment and hook them under the edges as shown. Step 3C, attaching the latch pedal. Secure the latch pedal onto the end of the latch weldment by running four quarter inch by three quarter inch hex head bolts from the outside 
through the pedal extensions and the top of the latch weldment. Adding four lock nuts to each of the bolts on the inside and fully tightening using a 9 16th inch wrench and socket. Step 4. Assembling the lift arms. Assemble the two lift arms to the mounts by first sliding the axle through the square hole at the bottom front of the latch weldment. Add a nylon square bearing to the outside of the axle placing the square extension into this square hole. Add a metal spacer and another nylon square bearing. With the wheel extensions facing to the right from a driver's point of view, add the square hole in the lift arm to the square bearing. Add a washer to the end of the axle on the other side of the lift arm and a cotter hairpin to secure the axle in place. Then pass the axle through the other side, adding another square bearing and passing the square part of that bearing into the lower front hole of the latch weldment, adding another metal spacer and a fourth plastic bearing to the end of the axle with the square extension facing outward. Add the other lift arm assembly, also with the wheel extensions facing to the right. Add a washer to the end of the axle and also secure this end using a hairpin cotter. Step 5A, installing the wheel assemblies. Add two nylon bearings to the insides of the top and bottom holes of the end of the lift arms. And then add a metal collar between them and slide the wheel axle from below up through all of the pieces and both holes in the end of the frame assembly. Then snap an E-ring into the groove at the end of the axle. You may need to use pliers or the end of a tool to push the E-ring into place. Then add the set screw to the middle of the collar and lightly tighten using a 5 32nd inch Allen wrench. But do not fully tighten just yet. This height will be fully adjusted later. Now repeat this step on the other side, taking two nylon bushings and passing them from the inside into the holes at the end of the arm, adding a metal collar, and sliding a wheel axle from the bottom up through all of the pieces. Adding an E-ring to the groove in the end of the axle and using the end of a tool if necessary to snap the E-ring into place. Add the other set screw to the center of the collar and lightly tighten using a 5 32nd inch Allen wrench. Step 5B, installing the wheels. Add a washer and a wheel with the extension facing inward to the end of the axle. Then add another washer to the end of the wheel and snap an E-ring into the groove at the end of the axle using a tool to fully secure the wheel in place. Now repeat this on the other side. Add a washer to the end of the axle and the other wheel with the wheel hub extension touching the washer. Add a second washer to the other side of the wheel and secure the wheel in place by snapping an E-ring into the groove at the end of the axle using a tool. Step 6. Assembling the tray brackets. Add the right tray bracket to the tray with the slotted side pointing up and oriented inward on the tray lining up the square holes in the tray brackets with the circular holes in the top of the tray. Then pass two 5 16th inch by three and a quarter inch carriage bolts through both pieces and add two lock nuts to the ends. Add the left tray bracket to the tray with the extended slots pointing upward and oriented inward and add one carriage bolt with a lock nut on the end. Note, before adding the fourth carriage bolt, you will need to loosen one of the tines underneath of the tray in order to add the lock nut onto the end of the fourth bolt. We also recommend using a half inch deep socket wrench to fully tighten this lock nut. Make sure to fully secure all four bolts and the tine that was loosened before continuing on to the next step. Step 7. Installing the tray assembly. Add the lift arms to the inside of the brackets on the top of the tray assembly, lining the circular holes in the middle of the extensions up with the slotted holes in the top of the tray brackets. And pass the four carriage bolts from the outside through the slotted holes in the tray extension brackets and the circular holes in the middle of the lift arms and add a lock nut to the end of each of the four carriage bolts. Tighten these bolts loosely using a half inch socket wrench. 
but do not fully tighten just yet. We will be fully tightening these bolts after we adjust the height of the dethatcher tray. Step 8A, assembling the handlebars. Slide the handlebar with foam over the other handlebar. Note, if the fit is too tight, using a compressed air lubricant or soapy water may help to fully slide the foam piece over the foam handlebar. Step 8B, adding the latch bar. Install the latch bar into the center of the handlebars by orienting the latch bar upward and aligning the holes in the extension of the latch bar up with the holes in the side of the handlebars. From the outside, pass four quarter inch by one and three quarter inch hex bolts through all four holes, adding a lock nut to the end. And using a 7 16 inch wrench and socket to fully tighten. Step 9. Installing the handle assembly. Install the handle assembly into the inside of the lift arms. Align the holes in the extensions of the handle assembly up with the holes in the tops of the lift arms. And from the outside, pass four 3 8 inch by 1 inch carriage bolts through both pieces. Add four lock nuts to the ends of each of the four carriage bolts and fully secure the handle in place using a 9 16 inch socket wrench. Step 10, adjusting the tray height. Lift the dethatcher up slightly and slide a half inch wood shim underneath of the tines to support the assembly. If you're using the dethatcher to scarify the ground before seating, then set the tines lower onto the ground. Now, using a 5 32nd inch Allen wrench, tighten the set screws in the wheel assembly to set the wheels. Then, fully tighten the four carriage bolts in the tray assembly using a half inch socket wrench. Be sure all of the nuts are tightened completely to secure your dethatcher in place and finally lift the dethatcher up slightly to remove the shim. Congratulations! Your John Deere Z Thatcher is now ready to dethatch. When transporting the dethatcher, be sure to pull the lift handle assembly towards the rear of the machine until the latch pedal locks into the latch bar. For questions, call customer service at 866-218-8622 for assistance.